Well, good day again. It's Charlie ZL2 CTM. So this video was looking at the uh, double balanced modulators. Um, these will be home brew. So this will be the configuration. Uh, we'll have two toroids. Um, both uh, they will be FT 37-43s. Uh, one for here and one over here. And then for the diode ring there, we'll use four matched 1N4148s. Um, like I've done in the past, and I'll do it again, um, I'm going to have a small 100 ohm trim pot here just to trim out the null uh, in terms of the balancing uh, in circuit. I found that quite useful in the past and didn't appear to impact the circuit too much, so we'll do that again. Uh, you'll see an A and a B there, that'll come out later on in the video, so um, the configuration of these two toroids are subtly different. Uh, in this particular case here, the two um, secondary windings um, are not joined up because we've got the 100 ohm here, but on this side here they are, with a center tap for our, our IF out. So um, I've just designated those arbitrary A and B. Now, to work out the, uh, the matched um, 4148s, what I'm going to do there, I'm going to have a very simple jig that will... Um, forward bias the um, diode and then I'll measure the voltage across that. So a 41, so again a 4148 through the data sheet um, has a maximum current it can take of 300 milliamps. Um, I'm going to do it a lot less than that. Uh, again this is, this is a low current circuit here so I'm quite happy to run 13.8 through a 10k ohm resistor should give me 13.8 divided by 10k is 1.38 milliamps so that's well less than that but certainly enough to, to get that nicely forward bias to get a good reading across that. So the plan will be to uh, get out a whole stack of uh, 4148s, we'll run them through the jig, and then we will pass them out into various piles uh, depending on their forward voltage. Um, and the plan will be to measure that down to the third decimal place. Um, and once we get four matching, uh, we can then go ahead and, and um, make up the diode ring. So we'll need to... Um, Eight all up. Um, in terms of the coils themselves, in the past um, I've used a number 38 um, gauge. Uh, in this particular one I'm going to try using 28, it's slightly heavier, um, just to see how that will work out. So just for something different today. So that will be uh, 10 turns of trifle around. Um, I'm going to use the drill for that. Um, and looking for that sort of around 9 or 10 um, turns per inch is so uh, where I'll get to that and um, I should be able to um, film a little bit of that as well so again FT37-43 10 turns trifle around um, using number 28 and as you'll see later on in the video we'll um, look at the configuration of A and B right so right next step is we'll, um, we'll get those diodes matched up um, and then we'll look to wind those toroids and then we'll, we'll mount everything. Right, so we'll just pause here and uh, we'll continue. So once we've got the um, circuit wired up, you can see um, the VCC coming through the 10k ohm resistor there, going to this half or this side or the positive side of the meter, and then the negatives going straight through. And hanging off that are a couple of little clips here, which allows us to uh, easily grab um, a diode, like so. So negative to the cathode, positive to the anode, that's now forward biased. And that's a point, don't have one of those, so we're just going to pigeonhole it over here. 0 0.626, looks like it's settled down quite happily, so that goes in that pile there. So I'm just going to keep doing this until such time as I have um, four of each um, of the same value, so let's get it settled down, 0.627 quite often that last digital point, this decimal point there will, will fluctuate after a few seconds looks like that one's pretty constant, 0.627 where's my 0.627 pile, I don't have one of those, 0 0.627 and we'll put that there, so I've already got um, 4 of 0.629, so it'll see us right. 0.628, so again, just a matter of letting it settle down. 
0.629. Looks pretty good. And we'll keep doing that. 0.628 is the little settle. 0.629. That's pretty close to for me. So what have I got there? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and I've got three of several other values. 0.630, I've got three. 0.631, I've got three. 0.626, now I've got two. Anyway, so I won't um, belabor the point. Um, so I'll just pause here and we'll come back with the next stage. Right, so the um, the diodes have all been matched and made into a, uh, a ring. So next step is to wind the two toroids. So as we, we mentioned, um, I'm going to use um, the 28 gauge wire this time. It's slightly thicker than the, um, the 30 gauge that I've used in the past, but uh, we'll give that a go. So it's more than I need, um, but I'm going to use around 20 centimeters um, per per um, toroid. Um, and that's obviously going to be trifolar wound. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go, so that's, that's one, two, three, four. So four toroids. Um, I'll now multiply that by three, so three times. And I'll get the three ends together. I'll twist it up and I'll put one end into a vise. And I'll do the same, twist them up at the other end and put them into a, a, a drill chuck, a, a electric drill. And then we'll squeeze up the old drill and we'll wind them up. Um, and then looking for that uh, around that sort of nine to ten uh, turns per inch will be about right. And like I say, um, by using 20 centimetres per uh, toroid, I'll probably have um, a reasonable, not, not too much left over, probably a bit left over, which can go back in the jump box for a uh, another project. Right, so let's cut that up and um, we'll throw it into the chuck. Right, so we've got the wire and the vise there. So uh, that's three strands running up to our drill. Uh, and the plan there is to twist it up using the drill. And then um, we'll measure... Uh, looking for that uh, 10 turns per inch um, and that there should give us hopefully um, enough lengths to wind up four, um, four coils. Right so we've got the toroids wound, we've got the diodes in their um, ring configuration so just uh, looking at the various um, configurations for the two, so all four look essentially the same as this. And we have two different types depending on where it features in the uh, the DBM. So A here, uh, that's notionally on the left hand side of the DBM. So if we were to go back to the original page there, we can see that here. So this is going to be the A side and this is going to be the B side here. So here goes the A configuration and the B configuration. And that's also depicted over here. So just um, making sure I understand what's, what's going to be connected to where. So for these side here, I've just notionally called them A dot, B dot, C dot. And then the other end of those windings is A, B, C without any dots. And that's what corresponds over to here. So for the A side, for example, we've got A dot ending with A. And then we've got B dot ending with B. C dot ending with C. In this particular case, um, these go to the um, the 100 ohm trim pot. And down the bottom here, just starting to have a bit of a think about how we're going to make this work on the strip board here, and just thinking about um, how the um, how the configuration will be. So again, left hand side here is the A configuration. I should label that A and B. Um, and that's basically the orientation there. So spinning it around, it'll sit on the board like that. And then this one here will spin around and will sit on the board like that. So again, just working out exactly where it needs to go to where. So on the right hand side, the B side, um, the B joins with the C dot, as we've got here. So we've got the B joining with C dot. 
um, and then that will go to um, the output. That's why there's that cross there means that that particular track has been cut with a drill bit, so it doesn't carry on through here. So, like I say, it's just a matter of now of just um, winding these together, and then we'll start to uh, populate the board and come up with a, um, a final product. Anyway, I hope that was useful, and uh, we'll continue on. Okay, so that's the uh, the two DBMs soldered up um, using that sketch there as uh, guidance on on how to uh, how to wire up the various wires onto the board. Uh, crosses there, as we um, mentioned before, signifies you can see there cut traces just using that uh, drill bit, so applying a bit of pressure, a couple of twists, and you take the track out quite happily, uh, which gives us some isolation between the inputs and the outputs. Um, so yeah. That uh, number 28 wire is certainly a lot stiffer than the um, the number 30, which I've used in the past. Um, it was actually quite quite good to use um, and didn't cause any major problems at all. So we'll see how the performance goes once we get into the circuit later on. So that's all for now. Um, like I say, that's DBM's made up, and uh, just for interest's sake. So on the left hand side, we've got our our local oscillator coming in. You can see the cut track there, so it's going to come in through that through here. Uh, on the right hand side, down the bottom, another cut track there. So the input there will be the RF, and then that um, that joined up linkage there, um, which is, signifies that over there. And oh, you can't quite see it's off off screen. Uh, is the output? So that's the uh, the local oscillator output. So again, the IF output. So if it's a product detector, that'll be our audio. Right, so um, like I say, that's all. Um, I think the next step will be to either do the, the VFO um, or the crystal filter. Um, so we'll see how we go with there. Alright, 73 is all, and uh, we'll catch you next time.